Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the Modra's theorem, and it's really an addition to what we were looking at yesterday when we were multiplying, multiplying in polar form, where we multiplied modulus and add arguments. And when we were dividing in polar form, divided, uh, dividing in polar form, we were dividing modulus and subtracting arguments. So we see a scenario here where we have 7 cos pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. Now I just made this up to the power of 6. So what does the power of 6 mean? It means multiplied by itself 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 times. Okay, so you'd be there for quite a while. And you can see, I'm just going to delete those. You can see I went and added 7 times seven, times seven. So there's six sevens there. Uh, cos, well, one, two, three, four, five, pi over four. So I have six sevens here because of the sevens being multiplied together. And I have six pi over fours being added together. But instead of having to write this out every single time, I could go, well, what pi over 4 plus 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 pi over 4. It's just 6 multiplied by pi over 4. And 7 by 7 by 7 by 7 by 7 by 7 is 7 to the power of 6. So the Moivre's theorem allows us to actually jump from this line here to this line here. Okay, so in polar form, this is De Mauvre's theorem, powers or powers that are weird. So this is when we're going to use De Mauvre's theorem. When it's 7 to the power of 9, or, or sorry, z to the power of 9, or a complex number to the power of a large power, or a complex number to a negative power. And I'm referring to these as weird powers, but fractions as powers. And we'll look at that tomorrow or the next day where we have fractions of powers. We don't use polar form, we use a type of polar form called general polar form, but that's, that's a future use problem. Um, so if a scenario here where we have cos theta plus i sine theta, and I should have an or out the front because or is the modulus, cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of something. I've got a box here. What we end up doing is putting the modulus to the power, and I have the argument being multiplied by the power. So modulus to the power, argument by the power. And I'll show you an example there, but that's the key point. Modulus to the power, argument by the power. So a question like this, it's really weird because they don't give us a modulus at the front. But okay, if there's no modulus there, it's really the number one. It's the modulus to the power, remember that? Modulus to the power, argument by the power. Pi over 6 plus i sine 3 times pi over 6. That's 1 to the power of 3 is 1. Cos of a half pi plus i sine a half pi. Does it ask us to leave it in polar form or rectangular form? It doesn't ask us to do either. So it's a good habit just to get into the practice of changing it back to rectangular form if it asks for it. So just make sure your calculator is in radians and stick that into the calculator and you'd get zero. And if you stick sine of a half into your calculator, you get one, okay? So it's one i. So zero plus one i is the answer here. Okay, the next one they give us a question in pole in rectangular form, and they want us 
to change it to polar form and hence hence means using what you've done find the value of 1 plus root 3 i to the power of 9 and remember big power you're never going to multiply out 9 brackets so that's kind of how you remember you're going to use polar form and the mod theorem so first things first make sure you go 1 root 3 so our complex number is up here let's go z we want to find the argument so it's at the modulus excuse me or or is well we need our formula okay a squared plus b squared or is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared or is equal to 2 what else do we need we need this thing here and it's called the argument the angle okay, so always draw a little triangle for ourselves this length is going to be 1, this length is going to be root 3, it's going to be a right angle. We want this angle here. We know the opposite and the adjacent, so we're going to use tan. Tan theta is root 3 over 1. Tan theta is root 3. Theta is equal to tan inverse root 3. Theta is equal to 1 over 3 pi radians making sure your calculators and radians it's the most common one that we use so yes z is equal to 1 plus root 3i but z is also equal to 2 cos 1 over 3 pi plus i sine 1 over 3 pi so we wanted to find z to the power of 9 so this is what i want to find here so it seems reasonable to put all of this to the power of 9 as well. Now, we'd have to write out nine that out 9 times. Or we could just apply the Marvers theorem, which says it's the modulus to the power, and it's the argument by the power. So 1 over 3 pi plus i sine 9 times 1 over 3 pi modulus to the power, argument by the power, 2 to the power of 9, should be a big number, yeah, 512, this is cos 3 pi plus i sine 3 pi, z is equal to 5, 1, 2, and I think cos of 3 pi is minus 1, it is, yeah, minus 1 plus I and that's going to be 0. Z is equal to 5 minus 5, 1, 2 plus 0, I. Do they ask us to leave it in polar form? No, they don't ask anything. Okay. And you can leave it in rectangular form like that. Now, there is a formal proof of De Mauver's theorem that you need to learn off by heart, but uh, it utilizes proof by induction now a quick little reminder proof by induction there are five videos so far on proof by induction there could be more at this point uh, on this channel so worth looking at proof by induction and then there's also a video on the proof of the Mauver's theorem already if you just uh, search for it uh, i'm not going to go into it in this video i'll go and do a few more examples now of the Mauver's theorem though so Quick one here, using the Mauver's theorem to simplify each of the following expressions and leave your answer in A plus BI form. So that's an important one. They don't give us a modulus out the front, so the modulus is 1, and it's to the power of 4. So it's modulus to the power, argument by the power. 4 by pi over 8 is a half, so then you're going cos of a, a half pi. Well, cos of a half pi is 0, so it's 1 times 0 plus 1i, and that's 0 plus 1i is the answer then, because we want to leave it in that format. It doesn't matter if the angle is negative in the middle, okay? We're still going with our modulus as 1 out the front, so it's 1 to the power of 9, cos 9 times minus pi over 18, plus i sine, 9 times minus pi over 18 is 1 cos of minus pi over 2 plus i sine 
minus pi over 2 and you put that into your calculator in radians and you get 0 put this into your calculator you get minus 1 pi 1 i minus 1 i not minus 1 pi minus 1 i um, okay so only one or two more questions left given that z is equal to root 2 cos pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 express z to the power of form in a plus b i so at the end of it we need to simplify it so we're looking for z to the power of 4 so um, it's going to be the modulus to the power so root 2 to the power of 4 and it's going to be the argument by the power argument by the power which is nice and simple then what we're left with is having to put this into my calculator because I want to leave it in this form. So put that into your calculator in radians and then multiply it by 4. And then put this into your calculator and then multiply it by 4. And you should get down to this line here. So that I've done it one step at a time. I've put this into my calculator and gotten this. Put this into my calculator and gotten this. And then multiplied in by the 4. Okay, well, with a question like this, using the information in the argon diagram above express each of the following in polar form so i can actually write this in polar form straight away because they've given me the modulus and they've given me the argument okay so the z1 is going to be 2 cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6 and z2 Z2 is going to be, they've given me the uh, modulus and the argument is going to be 3 cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. Now we need to remember what Z1 conjugate looks like. A conjugate is just a f change in the sine of the imaginary part. A change in the sine of the imaginary part. So what's going to happen is it will be flipped through the real axis. It would end up looking like this. Okay, so it would still be 2. But we're wondering what is the size of this angle now. Okay, so you could probably visualize that this bit is pi over 6. So if the brown bit pi over 6 and the full circle is the full circle is 2 pi the full circle is 2 pi and the brown bit is pi over 6 what's the black bit it's going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6 which is 5 pi over 6 so z1 conjugate z1 conjugate has the same modulus it's just cos 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6 and then similarly z2 conjugate is going to be down here and we want this angle here now you might be able to tell again that this brown angle is 2 pi over 3 the brown angle is 2 pi over 3 so if I know the brown bit is 2 pi over 3 and I want to find the blue bit and I know the full circle is 2 pi, the full circle is 2 pi, the blue bit is going to be 2 pi minus 2 pi over 3 which ends up being 4 pi over 3. So the z2 conjugate is 3 cos 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3. To do z1 times z2, well, what do you do when you're multiplying in polar form? So it would be this multiplied by this multiplying in polar form. You need to go back to yesterday's video and remember that multiplying in polar form, you multiply the moduli and add the arguments. And then similarly, if we are dividing in polar form, which the next question asks us to do, dividing in polar form, it's going to be 2 divided by 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 3. 
and we subtract the arguments.